Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Marisa's Total Well-Being and for Wednesday Wellness. Uh, I hope you're having a wonderful day so far today, a mindful day. Um, you know, I wanted to speak about mindfulness today. Um, I teach yoga, and um, I guess I'm starting to teach mindfulness, uh, but that's also part of yoga, right? It's just yoga, the, the asanas are just one part of of the yoga practice, the physical part is just one small portion of totally what yoga is all about. So mindfulness, you know, there's a whole a whole revolution happening out there, right? You're you're seeing uh, magazines on the on the counters, you know, at when you're checking out uh, of stores, and it's really important, you know. Think about this: we live in a really fast-paced world today, more than ever ever before. And, um, and let me know if you're on, you know, say hello, good morning, that kind of thing. But, um, you know, we live in a very fast paced world and we forget sometimes to nurture ourselves and others. And when we can slow down and pause, that's really when we can hear things in the world. Um, last night, I actually uh, spoke before a women's group, the philanthropic educational organization was asked to speak to a group of women about mindfulness and it was so beautiful to see so many people open and also those that also, hi Jonathan, also those who um, have already experienced meditation and mindfulness. So in mindfulness, we also do meditation. Um, with Meditation is just getting quiet, sitting still. Yesterday I was really busy with my um, health business and I was just going after it and then I just paused and I walked away. Um, I walked away from my computer and I came to my little altar space right here and um, thank you for throwing me the love. Um, you know, it's just, that's what we need to do. We need to be mindful and, and really more aware and more present in not just for ourselves but for the people in our lives. And I, so when I spoke to this group, they were so receptive about just understanding mindfulness because guys, 50 to 70% of the healthcare costs come from stress. And that's really scary when you think about it. It's, it's the way we move and navigate our life, the way we're surfing through our life. And let me tell you, I'm a, I'm, I don't like to say that type A personality, but I have a lot of energy. I always have had a lot of energy. I like to do things. I like to travel. And um, I remember my mom saying to me as a child, <laughs> and see, we start, we're growing. It's never too late to start getting into things, um, you know, but mom would say, Marisa, hi, Mary. She would say, um, honey, you got to get quiet. You got to sit still. Well, I couldn't sit still as a child. My dad tried to pay me at times to sit. Like, we'd be on vacation, and he'd want me to sit still. I'm like, are you kidding me? And, and, and he would pay me money, you know, if I could never make anything more than 25 cents at that time. <laughs> oh, but, you know, there was something to it that I wasn't getting, obviously, at that time. And I don't even know that they were really getting that at the time that, you know, this is really about being mindful. But my, being mindful can help you reduce stress. And what is being mindful? Well, it's, it's one, I mean, it's many things. It begins the moment you open your eyes or you wake up in the morning, okay? It, it's about laying there and maybe start with five things that you're grateful for. You know, I like to put my hand on my heart, my left hand on my heart and my right hand over my left hand. And I get really quiet in the mornings because I am busy when I get up and the day starts going, right? And, um, and I'm grateful for my breath, that I'm actually breathing, that I'm here another day. Just, just not even taking our breath for granted. You know, our body needs to hear our breath. So that's really what being mindful is about. Grateful for my husband laying right next to me laying for the dog, grateful for the dogs laying in bed with us, you know, those are things, grateful for my children, grateful for our health, um, grateful for a beautiful house that we live in, that, you know, we have a roof over our house, grateful for food that we can have when, when we want at any time, and grateful for healthy foods, and just, just giving you some ideas, you know, uh, grateful to be able to get out of bed on the right foot, literally the right foot coming down on the floor from your bed. 
It's just helping you set your day, coming up with a mantra. I do have a mantra. I actually left it in the, in the um, actually I have it here, but it's, it's my family mantra. And it's something that um, is very important to me and my husband. We created it together this year, um, right when the, the new year was ha happening. And, um, and I'll, I'll find that. Go for, oh, we've, we've, we kind of expanded on it, but it, it's something along the lines of go forth with energy and purpose, love and connection, happiness, health, abundance, and desire. You know, and, and those are the things that, you know, are important and happiness is important. So getting quiet, there's a lot of science about mindfulness. It is the new health and happiness. It's not really new if you think about it. The Eastern cultures have adopted this lifestyle for thousands and thousands of years. But we live in an industrialized world. You know, think about it, how the difference in, in the East, Eastern um, cultures and the Western cultures. So, you know, with industrialization came a lot of growth and business and capitalism and all kinds of things. And so we're, we have a lot of technology. We have a lot of wonderful things going for us. But there's a lot of things that we don't have. And there's a lot of sick people out there. Hi, Molly. A lot of sick people out there. She's the one I actually spoke to her group last night. So thank you for jumping on this. Um, but, you know, because we have lived in a, in a, a world that um, we have things and we are about growth and, you know, technology, um, there's a lot that gets lost. And it's the simple things that I'm finding in life, and especially as I get older, um, really finding that are finding the true joy and the true peace and the true balance. So I'm trying to share that even with my children and with others. And so I would just say try to just pause and get a little bit mindful. There's a, there's an exercise that is really um, good for you uh, to, to just think about. We call this RAIN, RAIN, R-A-I-N. So recognize what is happening. So yeah, you know, we have stresses in life. We have things that throw us off the grid, that throw us off that surfboard, right? That shake us up and make us feel whatever, anger or despair or loneliness. I mean, there's all kinds of things or sickness, right? So recognize what is happening. You know, what are your, what are you feeling? It's okay to feel those things, but just recognize what it is that, that is going on there. And then A, allowing, allowing this to ha to happen for you. You know, allow life to be just as it is, right? Send a message to your heart, you know, let this be the experience. Find yourself in this willingness place, this pause, okay, that, that to accept what it is. That is the A for rain, allow, right? And then the I, investigate. Investigate with an intimate attention. And what do I mean by that? Well, basically, it's it's posing questions to your inner voice. What what about this wants my intention? What most wants my acceptance of what's happening here, right here, right now? Um, am I feeling physical things because of that? Am I having some stress, am I, uh, some heat, some pressure, some aches? You know, what is going on? Notice those feelings, okay? Just notice those feelings and experience it. And something that many yoga classes will do is, you know, tighten up your face. So, so maybe take those feelings and really just tighten up your body and tighten up your face and just let that mirror back to you on what that feels like. It's just being aware of that and then release, let it go, right? Do that a few times and you'll notice a big difference in the shift of your body and the chemical reactions that are happening inside of your body, okay? And then the N is basically being non-identifiable, you know, non-identification, you know, resting in this um, natural place of what's happening. Okay, so um, we, we've got the we've got things happening for us, um, you know, allowing ourselves to just relax and being in that present moment. I used this last night. This analogy um, is like the ocean waves that go up and they go down. So there's this crest, right? There's this little wake that goes up. That's kind of the pause. So just understand that you're feeling things, but then if you can just pause a little bit. You will learn how to ride these waves of life. And I love, think of the seagull that can ride the waves. You know, they just, they're smooth, right? Even on the front end, even on the back end. 
They are aware of what's going on. There's going to be some turbulence there, right? But they're able to ride that wave. And I think that's really a beautiful analogy. Um, things happen. People lose their jobs. You know, when one door shuts, another one opens. Okay, right? That's what we all learn, right? I got a great example. I'll tell you that in just a second. But um, so what happens in the pause? So there is a doorway in between, a hallway in between the doors that shut. So when, let's say, an opportunity shuts on you or something that, that you're passionate about, that door shuts and everyone says, oh, but another one's going to open. Sometimes do you really connect with that? Do you really get mindful? Because the hallway in between those two doors is where the magic happens. And that's what I have completely found. And, and for an example is, um, so uh, a yoga studio that I had been teaching at for years recently sold. And um, the new owners are more about the, the physical part of the yoga. Okay, it was, it was way more physical than, than I want to be a part of at this time in my life. I'm much more about the mindful. I do like to move. I do like to flow. I like to teach that. But I want to work with people that need more help, more assistance, and really focus on that breath and slowing down. So really a mindful yoga practice. And so that was at the first of the year. And I knew something was going to happen. I put it out to the universe. I put it on my vision board and not being panicked at all. Just knowing that I was in this transition. I was in the hallway and I love the hallway. The hallway is where I heard things. It's almost like um, a, a music, a, a composition, and the the music that's playing and the notes that are playing. It's the mu the real music's happening in between the notes. Think about it. It's the beat. It's something that's happening. It's in the pause. So that's where the beauty is. The magic happens, and I just um, you know kind of invite you to to think about that. I invite you to just, um, you know, get quiet. Stop what you're doing at some point during the day. Um, and just come to a little place in your home that you like. Um, this is my little quiet space, my little vestibule. And I have my altar back there. And that's where I meditate, facing the, the window. But, um, you know, you can just, like, I won't do the whole meditation for you right now. But... Things to just open your heart. We did this last night, Molly, um, with your group. And um, we did what I didn't do is like really opening up the heart. But when you open up the heart and you inhale through the nose and you hold it and then you bring that beautiful energy, life force energy to your heart space and exhale there. Keep doing this. Do it for two minutes. Do it for five minutes. I can do it for much longer. And I'll I'll share that um, guided meditation on another Wednesday wellness for you. And we'll do it together, like plan to do it together. But it's it's just a beautiful heart expansion. Okay. And and what happens is things start, you're working on your parasympathetic and your sympathetic nervous systems, the fight and flight responses, so that when someone does piss you off in front of you on the road or on the freeway, you're not wanting to give them a finger. <laughs> you might give them a peace sign instead, right? <laughs> Seriously, um, these are the things that make a difference in the world. Your energy affects the world. So if we can come more into a mindful place, we can expand. We can expand our consciousness, Without being too woo-woo, it's not about that, you guys. It's about truly slowing down. It's about truly connecting with the person in front of you in your life so that you can be a more serving individual in this world. Um, you know, one of the things... Hi, Tams! Um, one of the things that I think is so critically important is how many times have you been in a conversation with somebody... And they interrupt you. I, I've been guilty of this, but I'm getting much more mindful about it. So I'm not an expert on mindfulness. I'm just sharing what I love. 
but I am really good. And I think it's because I do a lot of personal growth and development coaching, right? But how many people do you know that you're talking to and they hijack your conversation? And, and, and we, all, we all get excited about sharing what we want to share. We're in a conversation with a friend. But pause. Let that person talk. Ask that person questions. Keep asking them questions about their life. You'll have plenty of time to share what you want to share, right? But I notice it. And then you'll, you'll start adding something in that. Like sometimes people just talk, 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 talk. And then they might ask you a question about whatever, your kids or whatever, and you start talking. Then they, that, they, that ignites something inside of them. And so they start hijacking the conversation. So it's not that there's anything wrong with that person, but that's the shift we need to make. Little, small increments in our life because you matter. The person in front of you matters. And listening to them and expanding on what they are saying. You know, I think about it. If you're out and you're just meeting somebody and you just let them talk all night, trust me, you're going to be their new best friend. <laughs> They're going to say, oh my gosh, she was amazing. That other person was amazing. That girl I just met. Um, you might not have said two words or hardly anything. But the art of listening is also a huge mindful practice. Okay? So you want to do that. So remember, waking up in the middle of the morning, or middle of the morning, don't wake up in the middle of the morning. When you wake up, it begins. Mindfulness begins. It begins with, for me, hand over the heart, right hand over the left hand, left hand on the heart, closing my eyes and really breathing and connecting and being so grateful for all that is in my life. Grateful for the hubby in bed next to me with the little Yorkies next to me. I am grateful right now because this little guy's in his bed right by me. My little rescue. So grateful for this little guy. The other ones, he's a little older and he's in the other room right now. <laughs> this one sticks his tongue out because he's missing 17 teeth, but I'm grateful that we rescued him and that he was able to have more teeth pulled so he would get healthier. <laughs> so I'm grateful that we've had this little guy for four years. He just blesses our heart. So it's the simple things. I'm grateful that I'm getting on a plane tonight and flying to Cancun. <laughs> so for a few days with my hubby and a bunch of fun people, um, you know, there are mindfulness cards. You can go on the internet and find mindfulness cards um, and give them to a friend. Give one to a friend. I did that last night at this group. Um, this little stack of mindfulness on the go cards. You know, it's, it's super easy. And I'm going to end with one little poem and then we'll wrap it up here. But, um, you know, think of this as, as I, let's see, people are often surprised to discover that anxiety is more, a more constant companion in your lives than they thought. Anxiety is so pervasive in modern culture that people often don't notice it until their mind becomes quieter and more attuned. Through mindfulness practice to changes in the body and in the mind, it may pop up when the alarm clock buzzes. Oh, I don't like when that happens. We want to wake up when we can wake up, right? Try to. Or with the first ring of the phone. Some people find that they wake up already anxious. How do you know people like that? When we are truly present, time seems to slow and everything becomes more vivid. One thing follows another in perfect order and our worries drop away. All is well again. Anxiety is the subtle and pervasive destroyer of our happiness. It depends upon thoughts of past and future. It cannot exist in the present. What's happened in the past has happened in the past. I could go down that road if I want. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I'm focused on the future. Living abundant life. Living a happy life. Living a mindful life. And I want that for you. I want to say one thing. Uh, you know, social media can be a great thing. And it can also be kind of a, you know, it can be a sore spot, I think, for a lot of people too. Um, but I do try to post things that are inspiring. And... Um, I was on this morning for just a little bit, and one of my dear friends, a former yoga student, um, she uh, she's moved, but she posted a beautiful poem, and it brought back a childhood memory because my mom had this out in the kitchen cabinet. She like had it taped inside the kitchen cabinet, and you'd open it, and there would be this poem, 
and I hadn't seen this poem in years. And I want to read this to you because this, you talk about mindfulness. Um, if you know who Max Ehrman is, you might know the poem Desiderata, Desiderata. And I just think this is so beautiful. So pause and listen. Um, go placidly amid the noise and the haste and remember what peace there may be in silence as far as possible without surrender be on good terms with all persons speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others even to the dull and the ignorant they too have their story avoid loud and aggressive persons they are vexatious to the spirit if you compare yourself with others you may become a vain or bitter for always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own career, however humble. It is a real possession in the changing fortune of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals and everywhere life is full of heroism. Be yourself, especially do not feign affection, neither be cynical about love, for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Take kindly the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Nurture strength or spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune, but do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive him to be, and whatever your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace in your soul. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. By Max Ehrman. Isn't that beautiful? So, I would say throw me some hearts if you can. I think it, even on the replay, um, you guys, so I have, um, quickly, I'll, I'll end it with this, um, some meditation, a meditation PDF for you, simple little meditation techniques, if you would like, uh, drop a line below in the comments, and you will have that message to you for free, it's a beautiful PDF, and um, yeah, I would love to, to get that, that for you, um, and we will be back next Wednesday for wellness and I have the wonderful Laura Lee Gilmore again going to be on talking about since February's Valentine's month self love so she's extraordinary she is an Ayurvedic practitioner uh, she was on a couple times already this month but uh, we I couldn't think of anything more right before Valentine's Day than to uh, really get into the love relationship with ourselves so thank you so much for joining have a beautiful day and we will see you later Namaste.